All right, looks like we are ready to go. Got the 2 o'clock session, 2 o'clock Eastern time session for our deep dive training today. Got a couple of housekeeping things before we get started, uh, one of which is uh, we're going to mute everyone during the presentation except for Jeff and I. And you've got uh, Jeff Moore and I are going to do the presentation. We'll take turns, and he and I tag team really well, as you'll see. Then we're going to unmute for the Q&A, and then um, when I'm presenting, Jeff's going to monitor the chat window, and then we'll switch roles when he does his presentation and portions on his. So put your questions in there, and we will certainly address them as they come up. Uh, we will try to address them during the presentation, but if, if it's a quick answer, we'll just do it privately on the chat. The agenda is pretty much uh, retail oriented today. We're going to do an initial store setup. I'll do it live on an iPad, and then we're going to focus on the retail setup this time. Well, then we'll uh, switch over, and Jeff's going to do a scanner setup. And we're also going to address some EMV setting questions, things that have been coming up in the tech support area that we think we would be able to head off here and answer those questions for you now. We mentioned in our invitation that we were going to do employee settings, and we are, but we're going to need to do the security settings first so that we can set up uh, the, the security roles for the employees, and we'll show you how to do that. Then we'll do the uh, reporting area and go over how you can probably just sell the system by itself on reports alone. Then we'll get into bar tabs, even though bar tabs aren't the ones we're going to talk today are not released. They should be released within the next uh, couple, three weeks. We'll go over the new bar tab feature. And then, of course, any questions and an that, that you need, you need to ask, we encourage you to do so. And we'll have a Q&A period at the end where it'll be this kind of open to whatever questions you guys have. So what I'm going to do now is pause this presentation just for a moment and switch over to the iPad so that you can, uh, we'll just do it live there. The way we do that is that we set up what's called a um, screen mirroring, which allows us to then show on our window screens what um, is on the iPad. So this is my iPad being displayed on the screen. So as, this is what you're going to see when you download the app. You're going to get this is the home screen. You can sign up here online using your phone or email, store name, password, and then repeat the password, then do the sign up. Or you can just click here to sign up using your Facebook. Now, I already have an account, so I'm going to use it to do this. But if you were to go ahead and put in your phone, email, store name, and password, you could do that as well. So when you get into now this screen, I'm, you're going to enter in your phone number or email. I just enter in my phone number. And then the password. I use a short four-letter, four-number password. So it does not have to be long if you don't want to. These are my current stores that I have. I'm going to create a new store, so I'm going down here. Now, before you go any further, you're going to see that there are some 16 different demo databases that are here. So if you're just demoing the software, you can use one of these databases for your demo. To create a new store, then you enter the device number, which in this case, I'm just going to do one. And then you start in here. Now, I'm going to type in on my uh, iPad using my keyboard that I have, my Bluetooth keyboard. So in general, you're just going to name the store. Now, Jerry, I see here I pulled up your uh, address and city information. Where to get that from? It comes in off the GPS, uh, the location of the iPad. It so, looks at... Oh, it's, it's accurete, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, so it's actually, uh, you know, 
uh, really saves you a lot of time on your setup. You can obviously it does. change it um, from what you you know what is displayed there. But if you have location settings turned on on your iPad, it will automatically pull in this information. Yeah, it should say the 11th green on the golf course. <laughs> I now know where to target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it did, it accurately described exactly where I'm located. It just didn't have the street address correct. So, but Zellwood, Florida in the zip code, that all is correct. Now you can input the website address and the email. So I'm going to put in my email for my work. Tax. What is the tax rate here? Much better than it is here in California. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to put a default dis discount. And now here's where you start getting into the type of uh, operation this is, what type of store. Before, if you hit, it re hit restaurant and went through, and if you've seen our demos before, it went through and, and did the categories and set did the settings. It's going to do the same thing in retail. So I chose retail and the type of store that it is, get, get close enough. I'm gonna put counter retail. Now what I've done here by selecting retail and counter retail, it is going down to set a lot of the flags for us. So we don't have to go through and do that. So th now that's done. If you look up here at the top, I've got a green check mark. So that tells me that I have completed the required settings for the first part of this uh, store setup. Under items. Now you're going to have the default group. Now you can rename that, whatever you'd like, whatever the categories are going to be. Then the default item, first item. And then the price. I have a cheap gift store. <laughs> so now you can go in and enter the next group, what this might be. And then the items that go there. So you, that's all you have to do in a simple item setup is just put in the, the, the group, the item name, and then the price. The taxable is defaulted to yes. Just continue to put the items in as you see fit, whatever those items are going to be. Makes it really quick and simple. This is not hard to do. You'll notice I also now have a green check mark here. So I've got items in here that are entered properly. So I can now exit out and go to the next staff. Now it's going to default to the name of the owner who set up the store. It's asking for a passcode. Once I enter that passcode, now I have at least one employee. I've got items. And I've got the general store settings done. So I have now three complete check marks. I can now hit create or build store, and that's now going to build the store in the cloud and then download that to the iPad. I'm done. So you're going to see in the upper corner my. Uh my iPad there, and uh, I'm not quite as uh, good at the presentation as, as Jerry is, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit. Um, let me cut it down to where you can see my, there's that corner. And I've got a couple of easy things I wanna show you. You kind of saw me and Jerry um, are using a database that's already been created and has a lot of, of items already in it. Um, and when we go in here, I've 
got his olive oil database kind of up and and using that. If I want to go add uh, my barcode scanner to this uh, for retail purposes, all I'm really going to do is go into the settings window in uh, my Apple device, go to my Bluetooth, and in this case, I'm going to pair my device, which, give it a second, it will connect. Um, I happen to be using a Cypher Lab uh, handheld Bluetooth scanner. Uh, this is actually on our website. It's a cute little device. Uh, as you saw, it made a little tone as it paired. You can see it connected, and that's all there is to setting this one up. Um, this is actually one of the simplest devices I've ever paired with anything. I got to give them some kudos for, for such an easy device. And then if I want to go in and set up my my items, I can literally go over here to my web browser now that I'm paired. Uh, I'm going to go into products like this, and I'm going to go item setup, and I'm going to choose one of the items here like this, and I'm just going to go down to the barcode section there, and I'm going to go ahead and just scan a barcode like that, and you'll see it'll go ahead and automatically put in my barcode and stuff for me. I'm going to save here, and I'm just going to switch back over to my my uh, Adelo Express, and we're going to log in here, and when I scan that barcode, oh, it's going to tell me barcode not found, um, probably because it starts with a G. The item I, I started off with has a G in it, but there's the items we ordered, and you'll see it actually even works with modifiers. So here's some I've set up earlier. You can scan items like this, and just as fast as you can push the button and scan them, it'll come up. If you happen to have a modifier for it, in this case, you know, it's asking for which size, you can choose those sizes. So somebody that's doing something like a bakery can easily scan or, or choose those cupcakes and then fill in whatever else needs to be done on those. Um, but literally, you can set up a, a barcode reader in under a minute. Um, it's as fast as you can pair that device with your your iPad. Um, these Cypher Lab units, by the way, uh, we have a couple of others that are on the, the website. This is probably the easiest device to pair. Um, you don't have to go through and type in codes or anything like that. It's paired and it's done um, without any, any extra coding. Um, so that one's extremely simple. Uh, I want to go in and also show you how to set up your printers for your devices. Uh, this, we're going to return to the login screen like this, and you'll have your little menu key up here in the left-hand corner. We're just going to click on that and click on hardware. And in here, the system's automatically going to search for what printers are available on my network. As you can see, it found an Epson TM88-5. Uh, it automatically has the IP address of that device. It can. Uh, it knows that that device can accept a cache drawer, and I can easily tell it, yes, I want to connect it, and I'm going to have a cache drawer just by sw switching those little switches, and my receipt printer is now set up. Um, I can do the exact same thing for my kitchen printers, and anybody that's been following the progress of the system and, and watching us as we make uh, system changes to it and, and new updates will now notice there's up to 20 kitchen printers you can have. Um, so, and you can come in here, simply click on which one you want, turn it on like that. This one's ready to go. I can hit go back. And yes, you can have that same kitchen printer, you know, for select different as a different kitchen printer multiple times. So if you want it to print out multiple times or multiple different shits, yes, you can do that. Um, Obviously, you can set up a bar printer, you can set up your packager printer or label printer, it's all exactly the same way. So setting up printers and stuff, you don't have to install drivers, you don't have to um, worry about how to get the IP address and configuration. Most printers you're just simply going to plug into your network um, and you're ready to go. Um, so it's very, very simple. Uh, if you are using a Bluetooth printer, you do just simply pair the printer with the, the device, and it will also auto-discover it in the same manner. So it's, it's outside of that pairing, it's the exact same steps. 
Um, so really, really easy to set up for that. Now you uh, see why we uh, are so emphatic about having certified printers is because of that routine you just saw. Uh, a certified printer that we have from Epson or Star with the iOS drivers are going to allow us to have that th functionality in the system. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we actually did a lot of work with our partners to make sure that those those printers are auto detectable um, and that we can minimize the setup as much as possible. So, uh, yeah, Epson has used us in a feature article based upon the fact of what we're doing right there. So, uh, makes your life a lot easier, makes a setup just a breeze to go through. Um, by the way, one thing I will kind of show off real fast is when you go in here and you have that printer set up, you'll notice there's a little test button right next to it. You can actually hit that little test button, test your printer out, um, and see if your printer connects and stuff without having to do anything. Um, and, and so it makes life much, much easier. And the little test print you get is maybe uh, an inch long, so it doesn't waste a lot of paper. It tells you what the IP address of that printer is. Uh, basically gets some of the basic information of the printer. So again, pretty pretty easy to do, pretty ergonomic. Um, last one I'm gonna show you that people ask for all the time. They wanna know how hard is it to go in and set up their their EMV devices for the Adolo Express. Uh, we've covered this on quite a few other videos, but it's still one of the number one items we get requested. And the process is actually really easy. Once the the customer is set up uh, with Aldelo Pay, they will order their EMV devices. Um, you do need to go in and tell the support team, you know, what uh, customer uh, number this is. And so if you actually click on the little menu, you'll see down towards the bottom, it'll say subscriber ID. You'll be able to send that subscriber ID into the support team uh, along with the customer name, and they will go in and find the, the EMV devices that are assigned to that customer and actually do all the setup and stuff for you on the cloud. It's actually very, very simple. They're usually done in a couple of minutes. Um, and it's not a big deal. Once that's actually set up, um, so that they've paired that store location with those devices, the setup on the iPad is actually real easy. You order an item, click on the settle screen, and the first time you come in here to do this, you'll get a chance to either scan the device, um, or you can choose one from the list that's here on the left-hand side in blue. And you, I'm gonna go ahead and just choose that one it's gonna give me some information about it, including the IP address. I now know here's my device, and as you can see, it's initiated my device and it's ready to go. Um, so it's actually already set up uh, and working. There's nothing else to install or set up on the iPad. Uh, the other nice thing is if the IP address of the device changes at any time, it will automatically update on the cloud. Um, so, you usually don't have to go back and you won't even know what happened most of the time. Uh, so those customers that are not using static IP addresses, the system will just automatically find it. So what did I miss there, Jerry? Well, uh, I don't think you missed anything. I did have a question earlier this week from another uh, referral partner. Are we EMV only or can we do swipe only? So with the Aldelo Express, it is EMV only um, with those devices. We want to maintain the highest level of security for our customers. Um, we want to make sure that we're we're helping them out as much as possible. So it's EMV currently. Very good. And what I've done is I've now gone to the desktop and activated my Windows browser. So now I am on the Adelo Express back office site. Now you can access this from the iPad, but for the sake of this presentation, I'm going to do this on the uh, desktop on the Windows unit, so we can uh, I can use the mouse to point and talk as well. So it now defaulted to my email address, and I simply entered the same password that I did before, and this now logs me into the back office. You'll see it comes up with a 
little area here where we send out in messages to uh, to the store location. These are all the different stores that I have, and this is the new one I just set up down here at the bottom. But we're going to go into the olive oil store, so I'm going to go to the stores and click on the olive oil. Now this is going to make sure I want to do that, so it's now into my database and into my store settings for this this location. Now we talked about going in and looking at the employee settings, but we nearly really need to do the the uh, security settings first, and you'll see why when we get into the uh, actual employee settings. You get a little dashboard that comes up that shows uh, the status of the of the operation at this point. So let's go into settings and down into security. What you're doing here is that you're setting up in the security levels here for each of the uh, operations, each part of the operation. So you have the, from this drop down, here are the five levels of security. So you would have this choice for any of the uh, features here. And what you do then is you these are defaulted, what you're seeing, and if you want to change in the defaults, you just select the drop down and make that change there. You do have tabs across the top of each of these areas, so you do need to go through and make sure that you get each of the tabs settings so you see how detailed this is. You get to select all these different security levels. And by doing so, you're now setting up the options that are then going to be in the employee setup. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these and explain each and every one of them. That's something that uh, you as a point of sale guy can, can do that and understand it. You just need to know where it is and then give the uh, options to the end user so that they can then select what they would like to have as their security level. Jeff, is there any particular area in here that you think would be more important? Because they're all the pretty much down there that says staff securities. Um, yeah. Do you mind going over that real fast or let me go over it? Yeah, we got I got it right here, yeah. So you got the uh, go ahead, Jeff. So uh staff securities is another section where you get a few questions. Most people kind of get it. Um, but we've done a, a very good job of having these group securities where they can come in and go, you know, hey, if you're going to have, as Jerry shows, uh, the ability to approve time clocks uh, exceptions, what kind of level do you have to have? And we have five levels that are in there. Um, you'll see that there's highest access, above average, average, below average, and minimal. We try to keep it extremely simple for people. Um, and when they set up their employee, they just decide their employee has which one of those levels and this just needs to correspond with that or be lower than that if you want to give them the option to do that. So we've made it very, very simple. Same thing with um, almost any of the, the securities you find in here um, from back office access to the cloud to the actual point of sale access. Um, we use those five settings to kind of give people an idea of how to set it up instead of having to get very, very specific or doing roles. Um, we've gone back to making it very, very simple. Well, that, that security configurations need to be done first. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead into the staff area. So when you add an employee or you edit an employee, in this case, you would then have, this is where it relates or correlates back to it. So you have the different levels that you have by employee. So as you're entering in a new employee, there's a quick ad. Job title, we do have those and you can create them on the fly here. In this case, I'm just going to put her as a cashier, default pay rate, and then the access and passcode. Once that's done, 
that employee now has been added. So it's not hard and not fast to do. Now let's don't save that password. There are extended settings. So let's now look at what those are. You do have a little bit of an HR functionality within the system, so you do have the ability to track their emails and their phones and whatever. Job titles, pay rates. FISL ID, that is their, in this case, in the United States, that's their social security number. We we'll go here. Jeff, are the languages functional? Yes. Um, so the language functions and stuff there will change. Um, currently, the the software is completed in English. Um, Spanish and Chinese translations and stuff are about 80% um, through the software. Um, when you do change your Windows language, of course, remember that will change your currency symbols and things like this. Um, or in this case, your iOS language. Um, so it will, uh, you'll see more changes as you make changes to the iPad as well. So if I put Brenda as Spanish, when she'll she logs see, in. She'll see Spanish. Yeah, and when I'm logging in, I see English. Okay. Now you check off uh, what her functions are. Waitstaff is a driver. Do they receive tips? Schedule not enforced? Now, the POS accessibilities, we do have a messaging feature in the system that allows messages to go to and from an employee. Is this person delivery, retail? Do they use server banking and do they cashier out? For some of the drivers, for delivery, you might want to track, or the end user would want to track their license and their insurance when they do expire. You need any special notes on that. And then a few other HR functions. Once you hit save, now that those functions are saved. That's it for setting up an employee. It's not hard, but you do need to know about the, the security levels, and their and then their HR access. You do track time cards. We do have scheduling today, Jeff. We weren't going over scheduling just yet, but we were going to talk about time cards and pay periods. Yeah, we wanted to look at the time cards and stuff so that because uh, we do get some questions there, um, and the time cards are actually really simple. Um, to set up everybody, I think, tries to make them more complex than it really is. But as Jerry's kind of showing right here, it has the employee's name. Uh, you literally select it. It will show you how many regular hours, overtime hours, double time hours they have. Um, you have a, uh, we see a green bar right there. It says uh, current pay period. You could literally go look. That's the pay period you're selecting. You could select previous pay period, and it will go back to whatever the, the last pay period was, um, and you can uh, choose end pay period and actually close the pay period. Um, and then you'll also see there's a little hyperlink there to the right that says email time cards. You literally can email those time card information out right there. So it gives you the ability to go in and, and make some really, you know, fine tune adjustments. So you'd be able to see people's time card information here um, very, very simply. Do you mind going down to where it says pay periods on the bottom left there, Jerry? And so in here, you can actually see what the actual pay periods are and how much, um, this is where you'd actually normally complete your payroll. Um, and you'd see how much each person's getting paid, what is their, their uh, pay rates, how many hours, all that information. You also notice it says, please uh, clock out, click here to view the time cards. So it'll actually take you back over to the time card section um, when you click on that, and it'll tell you, you know, here's what Mr. Wilson, he started 827, and he's currently, for the, the current time period, 
he's got an open time card. Um, so he needs to actually clock out. Um, so, you know, makes it really, really simple. Yeah, go ahead and enter a clock, it, clock out time. Here again, just simple drop downs, makes life easy. Um, you know, not overly complex. Um, and, you know, just simple to do. If you click on the AM PM there, it'll change it to PM or you can just hit save. Yeah. I was going to give you a whole bunch of hours, put in some overtime and stuff, buddy. You know, <laughs> but, but there, there it is. is. He's in for, for 2.3 hours. Um, he can click the little X in the box, the top corner, but you can edit your time cards then. You don't need to ha do it necessarily from the iPad, but you can also edit time information from the iPad. Uh, you can edit right here on the cloud. It's very, very simple. Um, and, and go back and forth. Uh, somebody did ask, can you uh, put in custom date ranges? Um, the date ranges are set based on whatever your pay periods are. So when you actually go in and set up the software, you do tell the system, what are your pay periods? And it will allow you to go back and forth between each pay period. And you'll see there's a little drop down there uh, where it says select pending pay periods. You have whatever pay periods and stuff have been done is right there. So, and of course you can search back and forth for pay periods right there. So if you have pay periods, yeah. So, I mean, there's there's a search that goes whatever your pay periods are. If they're weekly, it'll be weekly. If they're monthly, it's monthly. If they're bi-weekly, it's bi-weekly. So um, that's how that's going to work. Um, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom for us. There, Jerry. Um, you can kind of see, you know, it's just a listing of every single employee that you have and what is their their payroll information. So. Mm -hmm. It's very, very simple to use. There you go, Jerry. Sorry, I didn't mean to take okay. over for you. No, we're doing good. I guess the audience is getting an idea that you and I tag team pretty doggone good. <laughs> All right, for a cashier, I set up the uh, job title as a cashier. I security level and is this person hourly and I put down ten dollars if I have chosen no in this case the number I would put in here would be their annual salary so you this does uh, accommodate the salaried employees but in case this case this person is hourly and I set the cashier rate it's ten dollars an hour and they don't receive tips I did not go into this, Jeff, which was in the settings area where you do have your payroll options. Mm -hmm. um, I should have did this before, but here you have the uh, how you set up your staffing options and your payroll options. Mm -hmm. And here again, this is where you guys are used to this, but this is where you'd set up your overtime information, your double time information, uh, the number of hours people are worked in a day, the number of hours they work in a week. Um, you know, uh, how do you treat the seventh consecutive day? How is that? Uh, all those types of things that you'd normally have for for operating a business and doing time cards, you can even put in what are your holiday dates. Um, and I do suggest if they want to use the holiday pay that they go in and set those, um, you know, in advance because they are not retroactive. So they do need to go in and set them in before the holiday. Um, and get that set up. Uh, can you open up the time card options there at the bottom? Thank you, sir. Um, you'll notice as you go in here, you can, how, how long are breaks? Uh, this is something that people wanted. What kind of grace periods and stuff can somebody have? Um, people have wanted that for quite some time. Um, you know, when they're doing their, their tip reporting, what is the minimum uh, tip reporting amount? Um, so you can make sure you're, you're staying within the IRS rules. Um, so they can definitely do all that as well. 
Um, and you can even decide are the gratuities held until payroll or paid out immediately. Um, right there, it's just a little button flip. And this is a um, store setting, which means this one setting affects all stations. So, so as you guys can see, this is not a lightweight uh, time card, uh, employee functions, time card functions. This is not a lightweight system. This is uh, more full featured. Yeah, and one of the questions I have here is, you know, when a customer uh, needs help for whatever reason uh, related to all Dell Express, they can simply call our tech support and we'll assist them. Yes, they have free support with this product. So if they have a problem, yes, they can, not only do they get free support, but they get free prioritized support um, for this. Now, this is one I like, prompting uh, clock in after the POS login. You saw on my screen, I got that prompt to clock in for the day. But you can also force the clock in before POS access. That is a really good security feature. All right, let's go ahead and then into the reports area. Now, I did show that when you log into the back office, you do get a dashboard. And yes, it does show your sales and whatever. Here, it's just a quick overview of the system. But when you get into the analytics area, now we start getting into some of the more detailed aspects of the reporting. Categorize, here's the sales reports. I've been ringing sales this morning so we would have some numbers. And you see here now where you have the sales, taxes, and then discounts, these are line discounts, these are line item discounts, and then these are entire order discounts. Anywhere here you see the hyperlink, you can click on this and get the number details. In this case, uh, what time they were rang up, the category that the item was rung from, and total sales. As you move down, you have the graphical report shown here, and each of these has the ability to then be clicked on and get into the details of what you what make up that report. I find this very responsive. In fact, if I rang up an item, or rang a sale, then at the end of that sale, these reports would be able to be refreshed and shown the new totals. Something else that you, nobody noticed, Jeff, is that you're in Pleasanton, correct? That's correct. I'm in California. You're in Florida. I'm in Orlando, Florida. And he and I were ringing up the same database on different iPads, and both of them were reflected in the sales numbers here online. So we're what, 3,000 miles apart? Yeah, we're a little over 3,000 miles apart and they're there instantly. Um, in fact, things from my iPad are showing up on Jerry's system uh, and vice versa. Every time we lock in or every time we, we settle an order, it's all there, um, it's ready to go. So uh, if I have an open order, he could actually settle it. That's correct. Well, if we have the flag setting correctly, in this case we do, because that is a feature that we can turn on or off in a flag setting. But nonetheless, guys, that's the biggest wide area network we could come up with. Yeah, I can't do much bigger than the the <laughs> far, far ends of the United States. Uh, yeah, you know, we can't get much further apart. But. So I'm going to just going to go through quickly. Here, sales performance. These are sales by item, product mix, even down to, to the device. So I'm device one, and there's device 35. Mm -hmm. I wonder who that is. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> You're out selling me, Jerry. I guess I gotta do a little more work here. <laughs> Get into the here, you have the product mix reports, sales by employee, job title. So you're seeing we have a lot of information based upon what uh, we're able to ring in. Labor reports are here. You do have summary pay periods. We don't have any data in here, 
but uh, I well, you may have one. No, nothing here yet. So these would be the labor reports that you would have, including gratuities, any breaks that were missing, and the score and store schedules. Under the financials, you do have the payment and tender summaries, the paid in, paid outs, cashier summary. So if we had any cashier reports, they'd be summarized here. Same thing with customer reports. You do have a customer list within the, the software. We can uh, track sales by customer. All you have to do is enter the customer name at the front end. You last for their phone number. Will they be able to look up their account or scan it? Here's anniversary, customer sales, incidents. I like this lazy customer list. This is the list of people who have not purchased here recently. And then the top customer list. Who are your best customers? These are reports that are standard with the system. Some other good reports that are in the audit area. So let's take a look at who's been given discounts. It shows the transaction. Was it an order discount, a line item discount? How much it is? And then total discounts by employee. Surcharges, same way. Modifier voids, refunds, transfer activities, is in transferring tickets. That is a good audit report to show who's moving tickets between the two employees, something that will be uh, used to catch theft. Open orders and settled orders, no sales. High tip warning, I like that report a lot. Mm -hmm. Time card edits, so who did the editing of the time card? and what time cards were edited. But these audit reports are really good for securing the system and making sure that there's a limited or no theft within the system. And then down here finally, here's some list, employees, customer items, all these different lists here that you can then take that report for. So, a uh, couple of things I'd really like to kind of point out real fast is that especially in the audit reports and in the financial reports, you've got a lot of type of reports we've never had before. Um, a lot of things you can kind of check out and, and see. And as Jerry pointed out, especially those lazy customer reports, the those are really helpful at starting to uh, find out, you know, are customers coming back? Why not? Um, your top customers, you know, you can see that are they – you know how who they are, what how much they're doing, those kinds of things. Um, very very quickly get a handle on why why people are coming back, who's coming back, are they bringing additional people? Uh, those types of things very very quickly um, without having to do a lot of digging or anything. It's just right here at your fingertips. Um, if I were in front of an end user, I would not really spend a lot of time on the sales reports. Basically. Because everybody has them. They, these are the ones, the reports that people expect you to have. But if you start getting into the lazy customer, top customer, the audit reports, some of the financial reports, you're going to start differentiating yourself from the competition by some of the reports that you have available to you. Uh, next up is bar tabs. So, Bar tabs are actually a new feature that's coming in, and um, they'll be in the next major release, uh, which is probably just a little over a week away, um, probably next Monday, Tuesday, somewhere in there. Uh, we expect to have that out, and it literally is just a matter of going into the back office, uh, going into settings, and turning on this feature. It's actually in the store settings. Uh, and you'll have the order type configuration there. Um, and right now you'll see this feature is actually great. In fact, uh, Jerry, right now we don't have bar tabs turned on for you. Um, so if you actually go down uh, to POS configuration, you can actually turn on the bar tabs right there. And uh, well, forgive me, I guess I'm getting a little rusty. No, it's uh, I'm a retail store. Uh, you're in a retail store, so you don't even have the features. Um, 
but it's just a matter of turning on the, the functionality there in the bar tab settings. Um, it's one little toggle, and then you'll have a box that shows up underneath it to ask you how much uh, do you want your bar tabs to be authorized for. Um, these will be what we typically call a limited authorization. So it will um, allow you to set how much the authorized amount is. When the ticket gets to that amount, uh, the card needs to be rerun. So if you set your bar tab limit uh, to $50, when the person hits a $50 uh, limit, that'll close that ticket. You'll open another one. Uh, very soon, and, and we're hoping to release it here in the next couple of months, uh, will be more like we did with Zara where you can continuously do the auth. So if you set a limit of, let's say, $50 and the guy goes to 100, the ticket just stays opened. And when you close it at $100, it closes for $100. Um, and we'll support both here as time comes on. But there's the function right there. Um, it's under order types and bar. And you'll see it says enable bar tabs. And when that uh, feature does get released, you can turn that on um, and you're ready to go. Um, and so uh, Gilson had a question here. He goes, um, um, is there staff banking functionality? So yes, there is staff banking functionality in the, the software. Um, it's, you'll see there's a staff configuration section there to go turn on the, the feature for staff banking and the POS options. Um, it's just a toggle. Um, and when you go into your employee files, just like Aldelo for restaurants, um, you'll have to turn on, um, uh, staff banking in the individual uh, employees, so you know who you want to have this function or not. Um, and then when you go into the iPad itself, you click on the ellipsis, which is the uh, button with little, three little buttons on it. You'll actually have a button there that says staff bank. It is uh, literally next to the cash button, um, and you can turn that on. And it's very, very simple that way. Screen is, uh... Is this person wait staff? Do they receive tips? Yep, and then uh, a little further down, you'll see where it says POS accessibility um, in there, staff banking. You turn that one on right there. Um, so there is three switches you gotta make sure you turn on. You do need to make sure in the employee file you turn on the staff banking, that in the store settings that you turn on staff banking, and that when you go onto the iPad itself, you click on the miscellaneous thing that you actually start a staff bank um, and that's really all there is to it it's and then it works just like the cash trace it's exactly the same thing um, and then I have uh, somebody asking you know if uh, a server closes a staff bank on uh, one station um, you know what happens to the credit card charges it's the same as if you close a cash tray the credit card charge it'll go through and allow them to adjust tips um, it will post authorize everything on the PAX devices. Um, you know, so it's uh, uh, very quick. Um, you know, it's, it's not any different than, than cash trays. The only difference is, is when you go to use staff bank, if there's not a physical cash tray or anything to pop. Um, that's really the, the big thing there. Oh, TQ is thank you, I guess uh, I, <laughs> You're welcome, Will. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm not right. up to date on that either, Jeff. I, I, you got me on that one, man. I, I'm usually pretty good on the lingo, but thank yep. you very much for both the education and the thank you. Um, is splitting checks in the restaurant uh, EMV simple? Uh, Jerry, do you have your uh, iPad still connected up? I do, and I'm, I'm bringing up a table service application. So let's just do a little tap dance while I bring that up. Yeah, Leif, you're going to love this um, because instead of trying to split things 20 ways and making this very, very complex, it's much easier to go in and go, okay, we're just going to split the amounts and you can easily do that. Um, and it's in the settlement screen. You'll actually have what looks like a little table at the top and you can uh, split it there very, very easily. Um, and of course, it's it's makes it very, very simple to do. Um, and of course, there's no limit to how off, how many ways you can split that that check. So uh, it is there. It is actually a really cool feature. I think Jerry is bringing it up here on his screen. So give us just a second. 
All right, so we're going to choose a table, and I'm going to ring up in my coffee database. All right, so I've got a couple items. You'll notice up here there's a little blue guy, and right next to it is saying seat one. So I can, if I did not enter in the number of guests at the beginning, if you did, it's going to show how it, you'll be able to do seat one, seat two, and whatever. Right now it's just a seat one. So I'm going to touch the blue guy, and now you'll notice I got seat two. So I'm now whatever I ring up, it's going to go on to seat two. That's easy. Over here on the left, this now is showing the seat number. There's two, there's a two, a one, and a one. If I want to move something from one seat to the next, I simply touch that item, and it now it goes to seat two. So that's as easy as you can get for moving a seat from one to the other. I can also touch seat two here at the top, and then revert now to seat one. And anything I ring up here is going on to seat one. All right, so now I have two seats. I go to the tinder screen, and now I can split. I can just split it in two different ways, just the whole order, half and half, or I can do it by seat. I just touch by seat, and it instantly then, now I have two tickets by seat, and I can just touch and revert to each one. Pick the one that I want to pay first or print both of them at the bottom here. I can print the current or print all. Here we go, it's a better display. Print all or print the current ticket. I can then close that ticket. Now that seat is settled. I now have one seat left. I can settle that as well. And when I do that, I get an option to print or email the receipt. So that is, that was easy. I showed you how to do it by seat, how to move from one seat to the next. You can split it half and half, or third, third, and third if you have three guests, or by seat. So, any other While questions? We're on screen, Jeff, no. Yeah, I want to bring up something here. This is a question that I've received before, and it's kind of obviously why we had the question, is, which was, can you combine checks and com combine tickets? And I've got some open, some here. But on the left, you'll notice you've got new orders, status filter, server filter, type, order type filter, and date. You can then sort these by date. But what seems to be missed a lot are these two little dots right here. And what that means is you have more. So you have a second uh, page. So on here is where you can combine and transfer tickets. So if you want to combine, you can simply combine these two together. Now those two are combined. How easy is that? You can see what he did there is he hit the combine button and then touched the tickets that he wanted to combine and click the combine button in the bottom right uh, to let it know that it's completed. You can combine as many tickets as you'd like. Um, there is no limitation to that. Um, so it is just a matter of, yeah, there he's combining three tickets. You'll see a little red checkbox on each one that he, he clicks on. I think Anthony's mentioned that this is really, really good software. Guys, it is. This software is some of the best we've ever, ever produced. It has, without a doubt, the, the least amount of support tickets based upon bugs that we've ever had. This stuff works. We tested this in the field eight, maybe nine months before you even knew about it. Yeah, we it's had a solid. lot of beta testing before this went out anywhere. So it's mm -hmm. it's very solid. Um, on the Aldolo Pay site, go all the way to the bottom for me. He's asking, can we have a link to show what hardware is available for this? Well, there at the bottom, under the support section, you'll see a thing that says supported devices. 
every one of our websites has this. Um, even the Aldelo Pay website, which is more focused towards the payment side. Um, go ahead and click on that for me. Um, there's two different formats we use between the, the websites, depending on what the, the point is and what needs to be done, you know, what the, the experience we want customers to have. But as you go down this, this will start telling you right here, this tells you what kind of iPads and stuff are supported. It'll go down and show the EMV devices. It goes down and shows you the printers. It goes down and shows you, I mean, everything. Um, and these are kept up to date. Um, we do go through here and, and add these things to a regular basis. In fact, there's the Cypher Labs uh, uh, unit that I just got in recently um, is on there um, at the bottom of the screen. That's the that unit I have in my hand right now that I'm playing with today. Um, there's the caller ID boxes, um, complete with pictures. Um, we have that up there. Uh, we do maintain those. We do update them um, all the time. Um, you know, it's it's available. Um, if you're looking for a vendor, I can tell you almost all of this stuff is available from Metropolitan uh, POS, um, and and. You know, they can definitely discuss prices and stuff with you, but they literally have almost everything that's on our certified hardware for the express uh, side of it. Um, and they're a one-stop shop because of that. So Metropolitan POS, if you need a uh, email address or anything to contact them, um, let us know. I'll happen to dig one up for you real fast. Um, James Gibbons over there is a good friend of mine and, and I've known him for probably 12 or 14 years now. Uh, and I got nothing but positive things to say about those guys. Um, but Scan Source yeah. and Blue Star, yes, there's a question about that. Yeah, Blue Star, Scan Source, uh, MS Cash Shore, all those vendors have a lot of the same products. Now, there'll be slight differences in, in products and some differences in price. So you, your mileage may vary. Mm -hmm. And here again, pick the, the vendor that works best with you. Everybody has their favorites for a variety of reasons, um, and I can't necessarily say one's going to be the best fit for everybody. Um, you know, if you're happy using Blue Star or Scan Source, please do. Um, they're wonderful companies. They got great customer service and and support, um, and and great return policies if something happens. Um, as far as taking care of those things, so absolutely, um, you know, use which only uh, iPad. Uh, what you saw today is Jeff runs his stuff on an iPad mini, and I run mine on an iPad Pro. Neither of ours are exceptionally new iPads. Mine is uh, coming up on two years old. Yeah, that makes mine at least three. Yeah. So Mine's got to be reaching the end of life here. <laughs> I'm on a iOS 11 something, 11.4. Mm -hmm. So what is the minimum iOS? So you want to stay uh, iOS 11. So as long as they can get to 11, they're fantastic. I tend to keep mine up to date to whatever the absolute latest is. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm an 11.4 as well, because um, that is the newest one. Um, but as long as they can get to iOS 11, that iPad's going to work. Um, that's the big kicker. I have a lot of people that goes, well, can I get one and it's used? Please do. If it runs iOS 11, you're good. Yep. You know, that's not a requirement. Do or use, we don't care. We just care about the iOS. So, so what's going to happen when the iOS 12 comes out and they can't upgrade to to 12? They will need to, you know, uh, purchase new hardware and move to mm -hmm. 12. Uh, Apple has an automatic um, uh, end of lifetime of about three years on their devices. So, uh, but they're cheap. Um, my iPad, I paid 300 bucks for it. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that after three years, I kind of figure it's worth, you know, the 300 bucks I paid for, it's nothing. Uh, if you try to go get, uh, a Surface Pro or something that's going to do the same thing, you're in for 1200 bucks. Um, my Windows, uh, terminals that I have in here, uh, the HP units that I have that are, are really nice. I really like them. But their wholesale is sixteen hundred dollars on them mm -hmm. for the the twenty six hundreds. Um, iPads are cheaper, just all the way around, no matter how you want to look at it. 
Um, I keep getting uh, in, information from my from Apple want me to trade mine in. So there are trade in uh, uh, trade ins available at the mm -hmm. at the Apple store. You also know that an Air Two now is going for about three hundred fifty dollars. You don't mm -hmm. need the cell version; you just need the Wi-Fi version. It's just minimum um, memory. You don't have to have the Mac Daddy. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know here in California, also, uh, Apple not only does the trade-in if it's still a, a newer product, but if it's a product that's obsolete now and they've reached end of life, they'll give you something for it, even if you just send it to them to recycle. Um, yeah. Last time I did that, I think I got 50 bucks for mine, which isn't a lot, but hey, meant my mini was cheaper um, and made it that much easier to get into that. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, Anthony's also asking Jerry, and this is probably a great one down your alley about cash discount program. Um, oh, yeah. Wanted to know some information there, and uh, I think that's right up your your section. We like the cash discount is a relatively new feature for us. Uh, it is viable in basically all 50 states based upon how you implement it, but it is the ability to have a percentage set by uh, Adelo Pay when your, your guest check is presented to the customer it is presented with the credit price and then with a cash payment the sale is then discounted by a whatever the percent is now our effective rate for Adelo Pay is just around two percent so if your merchant were to set their um, discount at two to three percent, then they would then recover all the cost of the uh, processing for the credit card. So they would be out no money. If they set it in between three and four, then they're making money on credit, actually. And we can set it as high as five percent. This is something that we cons we control, but it's based upon what the the uh, customer wants to do. So this is a good web page that describes the cash discount program. Now, we do get questions from ISO agents who want to know, can I make money on the cash discount? Th this program is not meant for the ISO to make money. It's meant for the merchant to recover the cost of their credit uh, transactions. So the thing is, the prices that are presented are printed, presented as a credit price. A discount is shown on the guest check that says that if you pay with cash, your discount is X. Did that stir up any questions? No, it seems to have, everybody seems to have gotten that or understood. And initially, we were thinking that this was a valid in 42 of the, the 50 states. But Jeff, I think we've discovered that it's okay in all 50. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, we're finding uh, everybody, you know, it used to be Vermont and Texas were a couple of holdouts where there's some questions about how to implement a cash discount program. But because ours is looking and going, okay, we're adding a surcharge to the total. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to discount an amount off if you pay with cash. Uh, that is actually legal in all states. So, so this it really is a selling point. It's a selling point for the fact that it then zeroes out the cost of doing business with credit cards. And one of the things I would like to point out real fast is that you know almost every state, you know, if you're going to do this, the Dodd Frank law says, hey, you do have to have some type of signage explaining this to customers. We actually have approved signage on our our dealer forum site. Um, so if you go to our aldello.com, hit the login section up there at the top, log in, and go to the RP dealer section, you'll actually have signage and stuff there that's based on uh, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, and 5% discounts already done. All the customer has to do is print them up and and put them up wherever they want. So question came up: Is this available for Adello Pro? This is an Adello. Uh, Express exclusive feature. Um, yep. Aldelo POS will never have this feature. Um, it's too many database changes that need to be made. Um, 
One of the last things that somebody just kind of private messaged me. Um, somebody asked me, can they upgrade their Aldelo Pro customers to the Aldelo Express? And there is right. on our website at www.aldelo.com um, on the downloads page. Scroll down the page a little bit and you'll see there is a utility um, that you can install on your computer. It literally, it's not even actually an installer. It's just the executable. Um, you'll put it on there, push the button, it'll create a file. They literally take that file, uh, go set up their, their account on the cloud and import it. Um, I have a video on our uh, Aldelo Pay website this shows you doing this entire process in under 30 seconds, and that is with a real database and real stuff. That's not a demo. It's not fake. It's not time-lapsed. It's not edited for time. It's not anything like this. Uh, they literally download this little, I believe the, the file's about 5K uh, file here. Create that, that little export file, and it will export all of your setup data. So it's not going to pull over their sales data. It's just pulling up all their setup data. So their employees, all of their their menu items, their modifiers, pizzas, all of this stuff. Uh, discounts, boom, goes right to the cloud. So you can migrate your customers in a few seconds. Um, and they're, they're ready to go. So, yeah, that migration tool is actually really cool. Our support team loves this thing uh, because it saves so much time for our existing customers. And Do they're we up actually have on the cloud. people giving up their Adelo Pro to go to Express? We have a lot of people uh, giving up their Adelo Pro and wanting to go to Adelo Express so that they can gain that mobility, uh, shed the cost, the high cost of Windows terminals. Uh, that actually does come up quite often. Mm -hmm. If you have to upgrade a Windows terminal now, which some of our older sites have that choice to make. Do they buy a $1,400 Windows terminal? or a $350 iPad. And the choice is pretty obvious. And they're moving from Adelo Pro to Express. So any other questions, guys? Looks kind of quiet, Jeff. It's a little bit quiet here. Um, okay. I'm a little you surprised. So, um, no problem. I guess uh, that kind of brings us to an end. I want to thank everybody for mm -hmm. for showing up today and taking a little more than an hour out of your day. Um, we didn't mean to run this long. I think I got a little bit wordy. I do apologize um, <laughs> for that. But um, you know. It's great to have you guys spend the time with us and actually see how these products work, and we greatly appreciate it. Well, just just bear note, we're going to do this again in a couple of months. Look for us to do another deep dive in September, and that'll be uh, two more for the rest of the year. We're doing these about every other month, and as you see, uh, we're constantly and consistently coming out with new and exciting features. And in September, we'll uh, look forward to having a few more for you to take a deep dive with us. We really appreciate your time. Thanks.